All right, what is going on, everybody? It's Roku, and we're back with some more League of Legends content. And today I've got a different style of video for you guys. Well, not a different style of video, but it's a video style that I haven't done in a while. This is an informative commentary video. For those of you who are new to the channel who don't know what the informative commentary videos are, it's basically like a video where I just play like a regular game of League of Legends on one of my Smurfs. And I try my hardest to explain everything that I'm doing, right? I like, I justify my decisions. I explain why I, you know, position a certain way, why I, why I do the things I do. And I basically just think out loud so that you can get a better idea of how you should be thinking in your games, right? So yeah, guys, um, like, comment, and subscribe so that I can uh, make more of these videos. Um, and yeah, let's just get right into it. I walked with my team there to get that kill onto the Karthus mid lane, which helped us with a kill on the Malzahar, which should give him more prio in mid lane. The Malzahar already has prio up against Karthus, in my opinion. This should tip it, I guess, in our balance, which, you know, if we have the better mid laner, we also have the better jungler, but, you know, Cheese doesn't decide games that often. I'm just staying in this bush in order to determine, like, you know, where the enemy is, I don't want to just walk out instantly, because like because the Rexai is not starting a red buff, right? She could be going tuck 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 tuck, and then like in level three, she'd be ready to just gank me. I, so basically, I do not want to push into him. I want him to push into me so that you know it's a bit more difficult for the Rexai to gank me. Just uh, trading here. When you try to kill your enemy, by the way, it's very, very important that you don't, like, hit a lot of minions, right? Try to position in a way where you hit as little minions as possible using your Q. Against the Orn matchup, you really don't want to take shorter trades, right? If you can get free Qs, like the one that I got recently, like, you know, like the Q that I got, then yeah, sure, go for it. But you really don't want to get, like, you know, short exchanges versus him because... Not only does he have insanely good short trades, he also has insanely good disengage with his W being, you know, CC proof and his E being, you know, a bit fast, you know. So, yeah, we're still chilling. Gonna queue that. Okay, get this. Now we're at level three. Okay. Because he used his escape, I'm gonna go for this all in here. And he should be just a corpse, basically. Alrighto. Um, I'm not gonna hit the wave anymore because, as you guys can see, it's still kind of pushing towards me. So I'm just gonna leave it here, go back to base, and get my items. I'll buy one potion here because, like, potions are kind of useful into the Orn matchup, especially earlier on. The way I, you know, went for that all in there was basically this, right? From level 3 onwards, if you can get Orn to be stuck in a fight against you, you basically win the all-in, right? And what he did was he actually wasted his E, like his movement, his only escape, to go for a good trade. And this basically led to him just dying. Actually twice here, because my Zin should be able to get this knock-up here. And that's another easy kill. You probably won't have the additional kill from your jungler, but, you know, the principles for all ending Orn still stand. You mostly want to um, either bait him to use his, like, you know, um, escape, or you want to make sure that you have the lane on, like, your side of... You have the wave on your side of the lane anyway, so that even if he does use it, he can't just, like, you know... He still has to walk quite a bit to get away. And thanks to our superior move speed due to Ghost, we should be able to catch up to him anyway, you know? Because it took me a while to shove this lane in, I am not going to stay for plates, because, you know, there he is. If I stood for plates, well, I couldn't get the plates to begin with, but, you know, I have to go back and get the items. <clears throat> Against tank matchups, getting HP and CDR help a lot, because against tanks, you're basically just trying to outlast them, right? You're trying to survive longer than them so that you can use your abilities again and, you know, um, do better in the fight. 
And the Kindle Gem is basically like the definition of this playstyle. It gives you HP, which lets you survive more of their damage, lets you heal up more with your Q, and the ability Haste, which basically makes sure that you have your Q more often, and landing your Qs into attack matchup basically secures, like, you know, the win in the specific fight or whatever. Alright, I got the CS, now I'm gonna ward here. The Orn is missing, so I'm going to push the wave. Ping missing. Alright. I don't exactly- actually I do, because we just saw that the Rex size bought, okay. Right, that was insanely risky, but because he used his knock-up thing to, you know, um, get to the turret, I could basically just wail on the turret and get the plate. And the other reason I actually did that was because I knew there was a plant here, right? So now I have one plate up, and I'm at a position of advantage. Now I'm just gonna get the CS. I'm not gonna Q him or anything. Okay, he just uses pull. I mean, he just uses E, but remember, we're not on our side of the wave, we're on his side, so even if we go for an all-in, then we can't kill him, right? Just gotta be patient, let the wave push in. This, this Xin Zhao is here, so if we actually start a fight around here, he can come in and participate and make the gank far easier than, you know, maybe make it so that I don't have to waste my ghost for the kill. Q this, they kill that, and now it's the perfect amount of four minions. Now we can execute a perma freeze. Usually you want the perma freezes to happen a bit deeper into the lane, but this is fine as it is. We're keeping our eyes out on the lane, I mean on the map. Pinging the missing. Rek'Sai is in the bot side river. Karthus is still mid, but he does have level 6 now, so you can start impacting fights. This Orn... Ult... I think I have to recover from that. What the f- Okay, the- <laughs> uh, <laughs> The Orn ulted to break the freeze, but it wasn't enough unfortunately, so I'm going to maintain the freeze still. <laughs> Sorry for losing my composure, but uh- <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, <laughs> if you're the Orn in that situation, the right call would be to start roaming, by the way. Anyway, I'm still keeping the freeze up, you know, just maintaining the freeze. He's just standing here, wasting his time, getting nothing done, doing nothing, whereas I'm just here, you know, getting CS. The basic idea with freezes is to replicate the damage that's being done to your minions. By the enemy champion or by the enemy minions, right? I'm just trying to last hit here. If you guys pay attention, I'm actually trying to auto during the autos on my range minions so that to like so that like their damage is basically wasted. Now that my team is trying to make plays here, I am gonna be a bit more present here. Alright, we can actually cut off this Orn here. And the Orn has no ult actually. And that's a kill for me. We drag the blue buff out, and we get the buff. Nice. Now I'm going to shove this lane out into the turret and try to see if I can go back to base. Shove it a bit. We don't have Stripe Breaker, which sucks, but it is what it is. If we can secure this next wave, we might have enough. Right, just slowly pushing, slowly but surely. Because the Zin is here, I'm going to be a bit more aggressive. He wants to make a play around this turret here. All right, we're just gonna take the plates then. The reason I kept it at such a low HP before the plate there, basically, every time there's a new plate, the turret 
increases the amount of armor it has, right? As you guys can see, the turret has 155 armor, whereas, you know, before the plates, it has, you know, less. I'm not going to end for this. The Zin actually left, so I have to go back. But basically speaking, when you have Demolish or something, it's good to leave the turret before, like, before you, like, at the very low HP before the plate, because basically, that damage you're gonna do, if it's like a big burst, it's gonna bleed into the rest of the plates. And the damage that you apply with the burst is actually gonna use the armor value of the previous plate, which is lower. Basically, this has 15 armor, this has 155. Each plate increases the amount of armor that a turret has. So now, if like you do the demolish attack when their HP is here, like just below, just like above the first like section, then it's gonna do the damage that it would have done to the first plate with 15 armor, but it would have been in the territory of the next plate. So it's basically just, it's like a, a bit cheaty way to increase the damage a bit. Because I am insanely strong at the moment, I'm going to force my advantage and just destroy this turret, right? And that is an early turret, which gives me an insane amount of gold. I'm going to get the CS. Right. I'm going to ward here, because if you're trying to ward the enemy jungle when it's split pushing, you, like, and you're on this side of the map, this is a very important spot to ward, because it covers all the entrances. The only way they can basically avoid that ward is if they use the Blast Cone. Or if the game RNGs the Infernal Drake, I guess. I guess because of the Infernal Drake, I'd have to ward a bit here, but it's fine. I'm going to try to walk behind this Karthus to see if I can get a cheeky kill on him. Malza actually ults him, which makes it perfect for me if I can just get in range. Never mind, it's fine. Um, Malzahar got the kill fine on his own. I'm gonna wait here for the wave, clear it, and then help him take the turret. At this point, we're just taking free plates. The mouse heart went back to base, and I'm just like, you know, taking the plates that he can't be bothered to take, basically. It's always good to take things like these, by the way. Like, you have, to, you have to make sure that you're taking free resources wherever they are. I just postured up there in case my Zin ran into the Orn, but he didn't. I'm going to clear this wave as fast as possible and then move. Okay, the Malzahar can have that. I'm going to move back to my lane. Actually, I got to move here to help the Zin if he gets engaged on. By the way, guys, um... The jungle is actually an insanely important role, so when you're playing, you have to make sure you can, like, actually protect your jungler, you know. It's annoying, I know, but you have to. We're just chilling here. Ghost up. Okay. This is going to be a bit difficult. Dang. I didn't expect the Zaya there. I got two kills for it, but I think it's fine for the most part. Because she's the only threat of their enemy team, I'm going to go for plated skill caps. I kind of anticipated that there could be a problem like this, which is why I went for tenacity in my runes, by the way. I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but... uh, There you go. I have tenacity in my runes there. I hope that was visible. Anyway, I'm now going to switch my playstyle because we've basically raided their entire top side of the map. The Orn, the Rek'Sai, and the Karthus are not threats anymore. But the person that is a threat to us is actually the Zaya, right? So I'm basically going to be adjusting my playstyle to the point where I'm basically just, like, targeting her only, right? I'm going to keep doing this until I get a few kills on her and hopefully a kill or so on my Lucian. Because at that point... We should get to, like, an area where, like, an area in the game where, like, my AD should be able to keep up with Zaya, right? And if I can, you know, make sure to take care of my ADC, then, like, you know, the Zaya is no longer an issue. Because the Malzahar isn't here to catch the wave, and the wave is here anyway, I decided to get the wave. 
I hate that the Pantheon was here to soak the XP, which is kind of int, but it's fine. Pantheon's going for an old play on Zaya. I gotta see if I can support this play, but I don't think this is gonna work out. Yep. I get to kill him. Free kill. Can we get this Rek'Sai? Probably not. Probably. R. Perfect. I hate that he actually stole that. That was int. Now I don't have my R anymore. It's fine though. We took two of them out, which should give us some leeway to get the mid turret with. By the way, guys, um, like, try to pay attention to how I'm basically just, like, you know, I'm not just grouping for no reason. I'm taking CS, then I go roam, then I take CS, and when I get kills, I straight up go and take objectives, right? Every time I get kills, I try to see what objectives I can get, okay? So I got those kills, and those gave me enough room to take the mid tower objective. Now I'm going to go back to base, buy my Sterax, and then be ready to carry this Drake fight. We gotta buy Oracle Lens because I am roaming a lot more and I'm not split pushing. Oracle Lens is a lot better because it lets me sweep for wards and it lets me like... Basically lets me remain undetected when I'm trying to like, you know, move around the map and stuff. Lucian dying here is bad, but on the bright side, if we get here fast, we can take this Drake. If the Zaya states, I can kill her with my uh, Stray Breaker. Activated it before the plant. So that in case there was a ward, I don't like, you know. Alright. In case there was a ward, I don't get hit by it. Okay. Get the ward. Okay. Now I start hitting the Drake because the Zin is here. Darius isn't a good champion when it comes to hitting objectives. He doesn't have good damage, which is why I wait for a champion with actually good, you know, objective damage to come in here and do this shit for me. Okay. We're gonna burst this down for this in. Okay, good. And then the Rex side tried to steal it, but she's shit, so she couldn't. Right. We, the red buff has spawned, which basically is just the red buff for our team, actually, because they cannot pressure this. The Rex side is not here. Let's hope the Zin can successfully take that. I'm gonna go mid lane and take this CS here. Karthus is challenging me, gonna move around a bit, bait him out further. If he came further back, I would try to catch him with my Stride Breaker, but it's fine, he backed off. Let's see if we can help this kill here. And that's basically free, alright, that's GG, kinda. Because that Zaya was their only, like, carry, and with that Zaya dead, they basically have nobody left to uh, help their team out. To carry their team, basically. Orn is bot lane, so it's just a Karthus here. I can solo him under turret if necessary. Our right, Karthus went bot lane as well. So I'm gonna start moving here. If I can get like a reset off of the off of someone, I can maybe kill everything. Okay, the automatic targeting actually hit the Orn. Okay, I'm gonna get out of here. This is actually in to stay here now. I don't think... Like, if I maybe started hitting the Karthus, I could have done something there. But when you pull, Darius kind of targets whoever he wants. So he targeted the Orn instead of the Karthus. It's fine, though. She's back online. Now, like, I would love to go for a Dead Man's Play here. It would make sense with this playstyle that I'm having here. But the basic idea right now is I gotta survive against both this Karthus and the Zaya. This Pantheon has been walking around basically trolling me by soaking all of my experience, which sucks. But, you know, what can you do? Mentally deranged people will be mentally deranged. I'm going to start taking the CS because I actually I'm kind of behind here. I need to get my level 12. Then I will start moving towards the Baron once it is up. Let's hope that the Malzahar isn't dead by the time I get there, because Malzahar is one of the best champions at defending Baron once it's already started by the enemy team. Alright. Chopping down the CS. I probably won't have anybody coming here to match me, because the Lucian is actually threatening the mid turret. So if anybody comes, they'll, they'll try to, you know, protect mid lane. 
And this just gives me the leeway to basically shove extra lane, extra waves in. I'm going to shove in one more wave. All right, the Orn is here. I'm going to walk back. If the Orn wasn't here, I would shove that wave in, but I don't want to get into a fight with him. Because with tanks, they kind of get to a point where they're too tanky to one shot. And because of that, like, you know... I don't want to uh, challenge that. And there we go. That's an easy fight. We basically just looked for an opportunity. And we found it. And the second we saw that the Rakan was actually low enough to instantly kill with our R. We softened it up with our starting breaker. And we just instantly went for that old kill. Now remember, if you're up against enchanters and etc. who have lower cooldown shields at their disposal, let's say you have a Lulu or anything, you have to make sure that you disable the Lulu before you go for that kind of execute. Say you strike break into like a low HP character, right? But they have a Lulu on the enemy team. Instead of just going for the ult there and probably missing it, you have to pull the Lulu or the shielded champion in and then go for the ult. Because basically, your pull isn't just a way to bring the enemy champion to yourself. Your pull is a way to stun someone, right? Let's say somebody's hitting you, they're about to kill you. You can use your pull to stun them and stop them from hitting you, right? Your pull can be used to defend yourself. And your pull can also be used to stop someone from using their abilities. So if somebody has an ability that will ruin your gameplay, you can use your pull to take them out of the fight temporarily while you get your chop on. I'm going to just start walking over here, take this wave. I hope by the time I get there, my team are wiped. I'm going to queue this quickly, get that extra move speed, and then start walking, walking, walking. I have my ghost move speed, so if anything happens, I should be ready to ready for an all-in fight. If I can catch this Rek'Sai, I can kill him. That's fine. We should be doing Baron right now. Um, it seems they want to do the Drake. It's fine. I'll just push this wave in. We can't do it without the illusion. The basic idea is if you don't have DPS or DPS is Mel's hard illusion, we cannot do objectives quickly. By objectives, I mean Baron. You can do Drake with like a full tank, but like, you know, um, to do Baron, you need DPS. Because if you don't do Baron quickly, then it takes long enough to the point where the Baron is an actual threat. Remember that when you were doing Baron, the Baron is still a threat there and is still doing it like damage to your team. So when the enemy attacks you while you're doing Baron, the Baron is like technically on the enemy team. Right? The Baron is helping the enemy kill you guys. So you kind of have to like be a bit more careful basically. And to make sure you have enough DPS to do Baron quickly. I'm gonna turn my sweep around here. Our DPS just to stay on it. Excellent. We have the Baron. We kill the Rek'Sai quite easily. And the Malzahar ults the Saya, which lets us kill her easily. Rakan has 5 million move speed. I'm not going to chase him anymore. Okay. <laughs> the Malzahar kills him anyway. But anyway, um, I'm going to start pushing this lane down so that we can actually take this turret, this inhib and start preparing for ending the game. Right. Okay. Let's destroy this turret. <clears throat> I'm keeping an eye on here because this like the second there's a fight here, I want to be there to make the difference there. I'm going to attack their carry Karthus or Damn it, I entered there. I wanted to queue the Rek'Sai, but I kind of messed it up. I wanted to one-shot him, but it is fine. We are still ahead insanely. It just sucks that the Karthus was the one that got my bounty. We bought our Gargoyle Stone Plate, so we're insanely tanky. So we basically won't die if the same thing happens again. Since Karthus is the only threat, we, we spent like a lot of time shutting down this Saya. And so now she's basically useless, and she's actually weaker than our Lucian. But now, the only threat on the enemy team is this Karthus. So, I'm going to have to start building against him, and 
I'm going to do that by buying, buying Spirit Visage. I'm only 20 gold away from Spectre's Cow, so I'm just going to wait in base. By the way, the maximum amount of gold you can bait in, you can wait in base for is 30, right? You don't want to spend a whole 20 seconds in your base. That's a bit int. Sometimes the item you're going to buy is so important that it's worth it to wait. Like if you're buying this, like a like a Strybreaker or like a Gargoyles, or like a big power spike item, it is worth it to wait like a full 20 seconds or so. But for the most part, you don't want to spend too much time waiting around for gold. For those of you who don't know, you get two gold per second passively on every champion in the league. All right, this should be free. I'm going to walk in and just kill the whole entire enemy team. Okay, it sucks that I couldn't get the R off on the Orn, but I basically held him together so that my team could destroy him. Let's just end the game here. All right, excellent. And they just FF because the second we kill Zaya, it was just the Karthus and there's not much he could do. Anyway, guys, I know this was a very short video, but this has been it for the informative commentary of this week. I'll try to see if I can get more of these recorded. But anyway, um, I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Peace out.